Jolie Ouais, vous nous obligeons à nous apporter du thé, s'il vous plaît. Mmh. Ah, merci, mon domestique fidèle. Mmh. Bonjour, les amis, et bienvenue au château. So, we are now officially in quarantine season two which means i haven't left my little apartment in almost three weeks except for do some shopping um go on like a run and stuff like that so je deviens un peu folle no je regarde en fait ça va ça va mais c'est vrai que je me fais un peu chier euh, des fois, du coup je me suis dit que ce serait pas mal de faire un petit vidéo où je faisais un petit déj euh, et on fait un, un ketchup et papoter un peu parce que ça fait un moment où j'ai pas trop parlé avec vous. And as you guys are always asking me to do like more French content and stuff like that, I was like, hey, let me put on my little Edwardian robe, put my hair in rags. Um, and do a little a little catch up petit déj with you guys. So, get a tea, get a coffee because we're gonna catch up. We have a lot to talk about. Um, all of this, all of this to talk about today. <laughs> so let's get into it. So first of all, I really, really missed you guys. I feel like it's been like a second that I haven't sat down and just like gone to catch up with you guys. So I want to talk about life lately. So first of all, I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm um, wherever you guys are in the world. Um, I feel like the last time that I talked to you guys, I was in my art residency. J'étais au Grand Voisin en résidence. Et j'étais pas sûre si j'allais euh, faire un nouveau résidence après ou si j'allais retourner en école d'art. So, I ended up deciding to go back to art school. I mean, I always knew that I was going to. I only had one year left. But I just wasn't sure if I was going to work at school and have my art studio at school or have like a studio in a residency because I honestly loved so much uh, l'expérience au grand voisin, d'être entouré de gens qui fait des choses tellement diverses. Um, but I ended up deciding to actually go back to art school for my last year because I don't know it was my last year and like the last year is the funnest year you know because you don't have to take as many annoying classes um, et en plus je savais que j'aurais un atelier avec mes meilleurs amis and honestly I was so freaking happy with that decision I was having the time of my life the first few weeks like uh, roll the clip la constater c'était vraiment drôle um, et en fait on allait organiser des soirées cinéma um, on a déjà commencé un peu même pour halloween on avait fait des petits um, des petites soirées entre nous et tout ça so what ended up happening is after a few weeks macron made an announcement a little macaroni he made an announcement saying um that there was going to be a new lockdown and it was kind of a shock to us all because we didn't think like we thought that there were going to be measures like a curfew things like that but we didn't think that they were going to shut down my school especially after like all spring i couldn't go to school and then i had just started and was like having so much fun and all of a sudden bam lockdown so now art school is online which honestly like it's like the weirdest thing ever i feel like there is nothing worse than sitting on zoom calls with like your professors and who are just like this close to the screen like for hours and like trying to show them like a painting you made at home and i actually get a lot of questions for you guys like how do you react when um a professor professor in art school critics uh harshly your work and I feel like you just have to remember that just because they're older than you and they're a teacher doesn't mean that they are 
better than you or that they know more than you. Yeah, sure, they have more experience in some ways. Je pense que c'est juste important d'essayer de cerner leurs intentions. Si vous savez que ils ont envie uh, de vous aider, um, you can pay attention to what they say, but take everything with a grain of salt and like you do you. Like you have the desires inside of your heart to do something for a reason and you have a drive to create and don't forget that you know like you're not here to like please people and make people happy you know there's a lot of people in my school that think like the fact that i do youtube is stupid well they can just fuck right off like i don't care you know like you at the end of the day are the one that is going to have to sit there with your life and be like yeah like i did this thing because it made me happy you know and if a teacher wants to critic you, critique you, and they are being like overly negative um, and like making you feel like shit, don't be afraid to call them out on that and be like, hey, like I'm here to learn and I'm here to take your criticism, um, but I really don't appreciate, je n'apprécie pas uh, qu'on me parle de cette manière, qu'on me humilie, um, etc. And there's a lot of that, a lot of big egos and stuff like that. So. If you ever need to talk about that, don't hesitate to write me like a little mail and stuff like that because it's definitely things that I've gone through, but you just have to stay, stay true to yourself. True to your heart, you know, stay true to your heart. Mais bref, même si cette situation de ne pas pouvoir aller travailler à l'école, c'est assez uh, décevant. Um, I'm happy because I think it's really important to always be grateful for closed doors. Le fait que je suis confinée à la maison, ça m'a force uh, de travailler les autres projets. Par exemple, j'ai commencé à faire la musique. Maintenant, je suis uh, I'm like fire on garage band. I'm like over here on garage band like na 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 na. Whenever you get a rejection or a door is closed, even if it you it seems to like a negative outcome, I think it's really important to always say thank you. Say thank you for the rejections. Like, not to the people. I'm not like gonna be like, thanks professor. But like, say thank you like to the universe because everything is happening in divine timing. You know, like everything is right on time. Okay, now I wanna talk to you guys about something that I feel like is really, really exciting. Et j'espère que je suis pas le seul de rendre compte de ça. En fait, j'ai l'impression qu'en ce moment, il y a une nouvelle énergie dans l'air, les opportunités de transition, euh, de, de redéfinir soi-même. I feel like there is just like this really interesting creative energy for all of us right now, you know. And I don't know if that's because it's like the end of the year or because 2020 was such a crazy crazy adventure so far crazy crazy roller coaster but i feel like for me personally i feel more supportive energy to go after my dreams and try different stuff like i was talking about like wanting to try music or like you know even like with my youtube channel like before i had kind of like a steady consistent thing that i was doing like studio vlogs and stuff like that but i'm like I don't want to just post like a day in my life videos all the time like I have so many creative ideas and I want to just feel free to express myself and just like share with you guys and um, open up you know and I feel like we really have to pay attention to our feelings you know the desires of your heart like when you desire to do something to be something to create something to learn something that is creator working through you, you know, and giving you that energy. In our day-to-day -day lives, we have green lights all over the place. And like the energy I feel like now is to go after your dreams, go after your goals. Like now is the time, you know? Et je sais que des fois c'est difficile parce que, uh, par exemple, je sais qu'il y a beaucoup d'entre vous qui ne savent pas encore uh, qu'est-ce que vous avez envie de faire avec votre vie, quelle direction prendre, etc. So one advice that I can give to you and that I try to always follow is to listen to your passion clues. If it feels like something that lights you up and excites you, uh, for example, back to like the garage band thing, like the idea to like wake up and like try to like make stuff on garage band, like that really excites me. So that is the direction to go in, you know? Um, if it feels like on the other hand that it's dead or done or like you don't or you're not excited to like wake up and do this thing 
then maybe it's time to leave it behind, you know? Um, and also ask yourself, like, is that something that I'm doing because of what other people think or about, like what's expected of me? For example, especially like even with YouTube, like it's really easy to just like make videos and be like, okay, I'm gonna make a video that is going to do well because um, I know like this type of video is gonna do well, you know? But if that's not exciting you and like that's not, you know, lighting you up and giving you joy, then I don't think it's the direction to go in, you know? Like, I feel like fortune favors the bold. That's just my, that's just my little motto. Because every time like in my life that I've made a leap of faith, the net has always appeared, you know? Like, jump and the net will appear. That is the quote of the day, okay? Alors, j'ai l'impression que ça fait un bon bout de temps que je vous parle déjà, mais il reste quand même des choses que j'ai envie de parler avec vous. Mais d'abord, je vais prendre un petit moment de remercier le sponsor d'aujourd'hui, Lingoda. So as you guys know, I've worked with Lingoda for over a year now because I really believe in their method of teaching which focuses on getting fluent fast by speaking with native certified teachers. I've personally tested their classes so I can attest to their quality and I also get messages from you guys all the time telling me how much you're progressing through their classes. What's really cool about the language sprint, the promotion they're running right now, is they're offering a 100% cashback refund if you finish all of the classes. So, they have two options. One is the super sprint, which is taking class every day for three months in a row. And if you complete that, you get a 100% cashback refund. Or you can do the sprint, which is 50 classes a month for three months in a row. And if you complete that, you get a 50% refund. The next sprint starts January 15th, 2021. So if you're ready to get fluent for the new year, you can sign up before December 28th to secure your spot. You have to pay a 49 euro deposit because places are limited. But if you use this code, you'll get 10 euros off that deposit. All of the rules and event details can be found on the Lingoda website, which of course I will be linking down below. But without further ado, let's get back to today's video. So back to our little petit déj catch up. Um, by the way, let me know down below what you guys like to eat for breakfast. Do you guys like to eat dry cereal? Do you guys like to eat eggs and bacon? Do y'all like to eat, uh, I don't know, uh, grits? <laughs> Let me know down below what y'all like to eat for breakfast. I think it would be actually kind of cool to know because since we're all from different places in the world, we probably have a lot of different things to eat for breakfast from one another. As y'all know, uh, we're in quarantine now, so it's supposed to end at the end of December. Um, but I feel like this time I am much more prepared uh, for the quarantine like I feel like um, since I already had like two months back in spring of going through all of this like I feel like I am better better equipped I wake up at like 8 30 and the first thing that I do every day is that was so cringy I'm never doing that again uh, the first thing that I like to do is write in my journal like I try to not touch my phone for like the first hour even though I fail most of the time at that parce que en fait quand j'y vais sur mon téléphone c'est comme un trou noir je suis comme na, 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 na. on dirait uh, le bag de la Seigneur des Agneaux oui les gens mon précieux I don't know like quand j'ai mon téléphone, je suis hyper, euh, je deviens distrait tellement vite, genre je peux pas, ça peut être un petit truc et puis un petit truc et puis un petit truc. La 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 la. Donc oui, euh, j'ai essayé de créer dans mon journal intime, première chose dans la matinée. Et euh, en fait, ça m'aide à vraiment tout vider, tout vider. Euh, de, en fait, des fois, quand je me réveille dans le matin, je suis assez anxieuse si j'ai une journée euh, euh, chargée, si je sais que je dois rendre une vidéo. Or... So, writing my journal really helps to just get in touch with myself. And like having that time, um, it's almost like meditating. Like having that time just between you and you makes you feel really good. So, je vais faire ça. Et puis après, j'ai fini toujours pour écrire des affirmations. 
like gratitude stuff like that and it just really helps me to raise that vibration that frequency i'll write in my journal and then lately i've been going to le bout de chemin which is a park a côté de chez moi et je vais courir pour une heure en fait je déteste courir c'est vraiment c'est comme quelqu'un puis un couteau et t'es comme ah! c'est tellement horrible quand tu es en train de courir et tu peux tu te sens la sensation tu peux pas respirer quoi but when I finish I feel so freaking good like it's those endorphins man like it feels like you're walking on a cloud so then I'll come home et je vais travailler entrer genre euh, 13h30 et 18h et puis uh, après 18h, uh, Alex y mettre. Uh, <laughs> il est. <laughs> il me uh, Alex has been wanting to watch Desperate Housewives, so we've been watching like Desperate Housewives but in French. So I, you know, get to see what the ladies on Wisteria Lane are up to. Speaking of TV. I don't think I've ever had a video more requested than to talk about Emily in Paris and a video like to do a review on Emily in Paris. Si vous connaissez pas Emily in Paris, c'est um, en fait c'est une série sur Netflix à propos d'une américaine qui qui vient vivre uh, à Paris. But I didn't want to review it just because I felt like I just didn't care enough. Like a lot of people, like a lot of expats were upset because they were like, it's so cliche. Like um, there's cliches on both ends, like on the American side and in the French side. Just things that aren't like, you know, right or whatever. But I just, I just don't feel like personally attacked. You know, like I just don't, it's like a TV show. You know, it's like if you lived in New York and people were like, Oh my gosh, review Friends, like review Sex in the City, like it can't really be like that in real life. I could see if it was like a documentary, but I feel like the TV show is meant to be a sort of escapism and especially now with like quarantine and everything like that, I feel like it's harmless and I feel like I, I did watch it. I watched it all in one day. It was like a fun watch, you know, like with some red wine. I was like, let's see, let, I mean, what's fun about it? Because there was definitely like some similarities, you know, like for example, when I first came to Paris, I also was smiling at everybody and like super friendly and I also couldn't speak a word of French when I moved here. Mm. But um, I was more like annoyed, I guess, <laughs> with the fact that in the series, she's supposed to be a social media manager and she has like 20 followers or something and then she moves to Paris and like she posts like, a couple photos of like a statue and it's like oh her instagram was like blowing up i'm like dude like it's hard to have a social media following and grow your accounts but i thought it was really funny like especially like freaking some of the characters um the evil boss she gave me like ptsd because it's so true like i've had bosses um Especially like when I was a nanny, like I remember uh, I was nannying for this family and I was like my first job interview and it was like at this really big fragrance company and I walked in, it was like this fragrance, fragrance company but I was going to be hired to be a nanny for her daughter and I walked in she was like super serious, like you would think that I was getting interviewed to be like, I don't know, like a creative director or like a really big post or something and she was like, um kind of had the same personality as like the main lady in the series i forgot her name but um she was like so how do you feel about you know working with difficult children and like she did the whole time like very stone-faced and then i remember like she had like a dress on a mannequin and i was like that's such a pretty dress she's like it used to be kylie minogue's like you know the singer he used to sing la 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 And I was like, okay, I won't touch it <laughs> Like, I won't go near it, you know, like Obviously, like, small things, like um, The size of a chambre de bonne When I first moved to Paris, I lived in a chambre de bonne And it was like, we eight, eight square meters, which is super tiny It's like a, a rabbit's cage, basically You know, and hers is like really big And they called that a maid's chambers And like, unless she's a maid for Marie Antoinette I don't think that her maid chambers would be so big, you know? But yeah, you know, like I said, it's fantasy, it's a TV show. I don't mind it. Emily's a little basic. She makes us Americans a little basic, but hey, you know, 
it was a fun one. It was a, it was fun to watch during quarantine. So another thing that I just wanted to talk about really quick because I never, I never talked about it in a video and it's just like I was on my Instagram stories after it happened and a lot of you guys were worried. So like yeah, the other day when I was coming home, um, I had gotten like attacked uh, in my building um and so yeah i just will like touch on that really quick like what happened because i i'm still getting messages about like so what happened etc so yeah um i'm fine now of course but like after it happened i was really shook and um yeah so what happened was we were at our last patreon meetup we were having a really fun picnic and it was like the best day ever like we were doing um uh, Halloween theme so we were all dressed up like I got dressed up as a witch insert photo um, I didn't really have I didn't really feel like buying a costume that year this year because I was like well I, I can't really go out to like any parties or anything but um, yeah I just thought like since I knew we were gonna be in quarantine again soon I was like let's do one little last picnic and there was like six or seven of us and I had sprayed my hair black and like I wore my long dream dress and I was just like super excited because I kind of knew some of these girls now because we've had a few meetups. Du coup, on s'est donné rendez-vous à la bout de chemin et on avait fait un petit pique-nique, on avait bu un peu de vin rouge, uh, on avait papoté, on a mangé des petits uh, friandises, tu sais, pour Halloween. So around 8 p.m., like we packed everything up and we all kind of went our separate ways. So yeah, I remember like walking up to my door, putting my coat in, um, opening the door and like the way my building is, is there's two doors. Like there's the first door where you put the coat in, a second door where you need like a pass to get into the main building. So I remember I put the coat in, opened the door, and as I was about to um, put my pass, up i like saw that somebody had caught the door behind me and i first i thought it was somebody that lived in the building and like i turned and it wasn't like some it wasn't somebody that lived in the building it was just like a random guy and i he just like looked at me like crazy you know just like was coming towards me like this and i was like uh Qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour vous? Genre, qu'est-ce que vous voulez? Um, and I was also like a little bit tipsy too because like we had had like a pic wine at the picnic. I wasn't like trashed or anything, but a little tipsy. And um, he was like cornering me and I realized what was happening. And like, I don't know, I had like some sort of like cat senses. And I took my pass and I went boom. And I opened the door, but he also caught that door and he had like cornered me downstairs like because there's like a stairwell and then a place where you can put like strollers and things and he like cornered me down there um but I think he didn't realize like when he came into my building that I live in like a really small building like it's not like a courtyard where it's not like you put your passcode in and then you're like in a courtyard where nobody would hear you and I think I said I was like talking to him like he was a child because I was like this is like how you talk to somebody who's trying to like attack you so I was like cast well like I think I, I was like really firm to him with him and like talking to him like I wasn't scared and I don't know if that was because I was a little tipsy or because I just went into like mom fighting mode. Like I was fighting for myself. I was like my own mom in that, in that moment. And I was like, dégagez tout de suite d'ici. Um, Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Qu'est-ce que vous pensez aller faire? Parce que tout le monde va entendre. And I don't know. I think I have like a guardian angel or something. I mean, I think we all do. I don't really know how I got out of there. I think I just like, he got scared because there was like a door um, at like the last étage, at the last floor that opened or something. And he just realized like, there's no way I can get like away with this. So he just ran off. Um, and then I remember like running upstairs and like feeling very flustered because it was like, it happened so fast. And I didn't even have my guard up, guard up at all. You know, I've lived in this apartment for five years and I've never had anything like that happen and so I like went inside and like I just started sobbing in the bathroom and then like 10 minutes after that Alex came home and I like told him what happened and 
everything like that and then i like got on my instagram stories and i was like you guys like this is the real emily in paris like i was kind of drunk you know uh <laughs> like i remember like a few days later at school one of my teachers saw me and he was like are you okay i saw your instagram story and i was like fuck um great but at the same time i was happy because i mean i wasn't happy but um it gave me an opportunity to like kind of talk about that kind of stuff with you guys because i feel like when something like that happens like the person who is attacked is you know in a way almost seen as like oh it's shameful to them or like to be ashamed of it or whatever but you know i'm really happy i got away but at the same time like i know so many other girls go through that and aren't able to get away and it's just like a real problem you know um and it's not even just that it's like the microaggressions every day of like walking in the street and like getting cat called or like you know i was dressed as a witch and like i it was 8 p.m like it can happen anywhere and i just just know that you guys aren't alone um that, that kind of stuff happens a lot unfortunately but yeah it made me think about like um paris and like just big cities in general um how we can protect ourselves and how we can be safe and i remember like a few days later i told my friend i'm like i'm gonna buy a taser that way like i'm not gonna be a victim anymore like i'm not gonna feel like because honestly if the guy wanted to in that situation he could have taken me because he was my age ish yeah like he could have definitely taken me so i was like you know i'm gonna get a taser and <laughs> my friend my french friend she's like uh, you know like we can't get tasers like that's illegal here and i looked up and i was like shit it is illegal like what can i do like what can i carry around with me i can't what am i gonna carry around like a kitchen knife like a butcher knife like i don't know i mean people always say like carry your keys like that but i'm like what's that gonna do like i don't know um i think the best thing is just to always try to scream and run away and because fighting i don't know i mean obviously fight if you have to but I feel like in those situations you're so shocked like um there is a spider on my wall go away but, um i remember like in high school i had um a thing of pepper spray but it was like a little mini one that you put on your keychain and i never used it um and then one day i'm like you know what i've never i've had this for like four years i've never used it i want to see like sa puissance like j'ai envie de voir si vraiment je l'active qu'est ce que ça ferait est ce que ça va être comme pshh or est-ce que tu vois qu'est-ce que ça va faire? Donc j'ai levé le prix et je vais euh, déclencher contre le mur. Je vais appuyer sur le bouton et ça faisait comme ça. Je dis ah super, je suis content que j'ai jamais eu besoin de l'utiliser parce que je pense que si j'avais besoin de, de faire ça contre quelqu'un et ça faisait comme ça et ça a pas vraiment allé jusque leurs yeux, bah en fait ils m'auraient tué quoi si j'ai essayé de faire ça. Au... Je sais pas. Aussi le problème c'est que Si t'as an uh, arm, quelqu'un peut utiliser ça contre toi. So yeah, after it happened, like, um, I went to school and I saw one of my friends and she was teaching me like judo tricks, like some different moves that you can do to protect yourself. So that was really nice of her. But above all, it just really taught me that, um, like even if you have gone to the same store a million times even if you have you know lived in the same apartment like me for five years like it can happen anytime anywhere so just always keep your guard up and i don't think it necessarily like people always ask like is paris safe i don't think it has to do with paris because it can happen like in any big city like or any small town you know you just have to always be aware so i just wanted to touch on that because i never really expounded on like what happened i just like had posted those like stories of like oh my gosh you guys and then not explaining that i'm fine I was just very flustered and shook but i'm just really grateful to have a community like you guys that care about me and that i can chill and talk to and yeah i was thinking about like projects that we could do together during quarantine because i think it's really cool that like 
we are able to do you know art together and i remember i think it was like a year ago i had done like a sculpture with you guys or like i had started the sculpture and then you guys got to vote on like the colors and stuff like that so i've been brainstorming and thinking about like different little little projects and activities we could do together like i thought about you know maybe we could do like an instagram talent show um covid's got talent and you guys could like send me like short videos of you guys doing the thing that you're talented at um and if you're not talented at anything you can just like send a like a video with a positive quote <laughs> can you imagine like i just get positive quotes um and like that way you can share your talent like i can use my platform to help share your guys's talent and it could be like a fun activity i also thought about like maybe writing like an and a play like a short scene of a play and then like having you guys perform it i don't know i have a lot of ideas so make sure to follow me on instagram if you guys want to participate and let me know if you guys think those are cool ideas i don't know i just like this kind of collaborative community project so yeah i love you guys so much thank you for watching if you've made it just until the end if you've made it until the end leave the comment with the word cellar door uh, so I know that you guys watch the whole thing and also if you guys didn't know the word cellar door well the word cellar door was voted to be um, the two most beautiful combinations of words in the English language and I kind of agree cellar door that's really pretty um, <laughs> I'm just like I haven't seen people in so long I'm going on tangents because I don't want to say goodbye <laughs> but yeah I love you guys. Thank you for watching. You can find me on Patreon if you like what I'm doing and want to support, get podcast episodes, come to future meetups, etc. Join the family. And I will see you guys very soon for a new video. Bye.